Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Planning Committee of December the 7th, 2021. Um, there's no planned fire drill, but if the alarms go off, uh, follow me out of the nearest fire exit. Um, we'll go straight to the agenda. Apologies for absence. I've got apologies from Councillor Greatrix, Councillor Bailey and Councillor Goodall. I think that covers everyone. Thank you. Minutes of the previous meeting. Um, the minutes were distributed, but Sally, I think you have a couple of minor amendments. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just a, just a few amendments to um, the second condition, sec condition two, regards uh, plan numbers. So there's an alteration to plan number, uh, proposed site plan 303, should be referenced P05. Um, and then condition three, the wording should say the ancillary trade counter in Travis, Travis Perkins shall occupy no more than 25% of the floor space, including mezzanine, of the unit for retail sales purposes. So it's just a minor amendment to the, the wording there. It was a bit mixed up. Uh, condition 7 says no development shall commence until details of biodiversity enhancement measures are included and that should say ex excluding demolition so no development shall commence excluding demolition it's just inserting that word or those words and that the same on number 11 notwithstanding the details provided no development shall shall commence excluding demolition until a detailed surface foul and water drainage scheme has been submitted and then finally um, there's a few further references to a drawing number 15029-330, uh, which should, should say revision P05. I think we said revision P03 in the report. So it's mentioned in condition 23, 24 and 27 and 28. It's the same plan number each time. So it's revision P05. Thank you, it, Sally. Thank you, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they don't materially affect materially affect the minutes. Um, has anybody got any comments on the minutes? I'm happy to move those with the amendments. Have I got a seconder? Councillor Pritchard, thank you. All in favour? Yeah, that's carried. Thank you. On to item three, uh, declarations of interest. Um, I have to declare an interest at the start on behalf of all members of the committee um, on application Odable 34 2021. Uh, the application is in reference to the Tamworth Daycare Centre. Uh, we all have an interest as the land will come under the future ownership of Tamworth Borough Council. So therefore um, I had to uh, request a dispensation for us to uh, be able to carry out the business this evening. The monitoring office officer has granted that dispensation, um, which is for a period of no longer than four years from the date of the email. So essentially we can talk about the application tonight and vote on it, um, just so you're all aware. You should have seen the email earlier, hopefully. Um, however, that is overridden by <coughs> another declaration from Councillor Jay. Yeah, thank you. Um, as an elected county councillor for Staffordshire, uh, I have an interest in the second item. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Uh, so that is due to the County Council being the current owners of the property concerned. So, uh, Councillor Jay, I'll ask you to leave and have an early night after the first application. I'm sure you won't object. Are there any other declarations of interest? No. Right. We'll move on to applications then. So, first of all, we have... Uh, application number 037 2020, Sandy Hill Business Park, Sandy Way, Amington Industrial Estate. Sally, would you like to present? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so we've got Sandy Hill Business Park. It was previously a depot owned by the council and it was sold several years ago. Um, the site currently comprises two office units and four other commercial buildings. Um, and they're, they're all located around the entrance from Sandy Way. Um, if we can move up to the next slide. 
the application is for a new two-storey office building and associated uh, multi-storey car park next to it. Um, the office building is 1,254 square metres in an L-shaped configuration and of a design that's similar to offices um, on, the, on that part of the estate uh, with brick walls and a tiled hip roof, same sort of design. And the multi-storey car park is set within the site slope to accommodate 118 spaces and two disabled spaces. If we just run through the slides first, so that's the... Um, the aerial view of the of the site. You can see um, the bottom of the of the picture at the right is a sort of L-shaped building. That's existing offices. Um, the the white building that's that's partially completed there is actually now completed. So this was taken some time ago. That's also offices. And then um, directly opposite that, um, you can see a, a large tree in the middle of the site. Um, below that will be the proposed new offices, and then. Um, above the, the tree, effectively, the site of the tree will be um, the new car park, multi-storey car park built into the, the bank of the, or the slope of the bank. Um, you can't quite appreciate the, the slope of the site there, but it is in quite an elevated position. If we go to the next slide, please. Yeah, that's, that's just an indication showing the adjacent uh, golf, golf course development, um, just so you can get a, a bit of a bearing of the site. And the next one, please. Okay, the, if you can, this is this is actually turned turned around um, at ninety degrees. So um, the L shape at the bottom of the picture that is the proposal for the new offices. The other the other buildings you can see in grey are existing buildings. And then to the the left of the L shape offices is where the proposed um, car park is. So if I just run through some of the details on the report, the design, as, as you'll see there, um, as I say, the site is in, in an elevated position. Uh, the proposed building is set back from the highway and it's not prominent from the main road, but it'll be seen along the backdrop of the other commercial and industrial buildings within the area. The proposed office building is 1,254 square metres and a, of a design similar to the, the adjacent buildings. And as I say, the multi-storey car park will accommodate 118 spaces. Um, the, the design, <coughs> excuse me, the design is, follows the same principles and palette of materials as the existing units. Um, and it is considered that, that this would result in a, in a high quality building. They are very high quality buildings at the moment and this will add to those. It would enhance the character and appearance of the street scene and the surrounding area. Um, and then in addition, there, there is also proposed soft and hard landscaping and appropriately, de appropriately designed lighting. If we perhaps go back to the uh, previous slide, the, the layout, yeah. Um, in terms of highways, there's no objections from the uh, the county highways authority, Staffordshire County Council. Um, they've recommended some conditions which are included in the report regarding provision of parking and turning areas, um, height restrictions of the, of the um, multi-storey car park, provision of cycle stores, a construction management plan and also a travel plan setting out proposals to promote travel by sustainable modes and subsequent monitoring of that plan. Um, that also requires a Section 106 agreement to secure a framework travel plan, including a contribution towards the monitoring of the plan of £12,320. Uh, but because it's a monetary amount, it needs to be uh, secured via a Section 106 agreement. Um, other issues were regarding flooding and drainage. Again, uh, Staffs County Council, the lead local local lead flood authority (LLFA) and Seven Trent have been consulted, um, and the the application site is not actually in a flood zone, um, but um, the application is supported by a drainage report, and it's been demonstrated that the development would not be subject to flood risks. So uh, both both uh, those authorities have suggested conditions. <coughs> 
regarding um, ecology and biodiversity. Again, we've, uh, we've consulted with the, with the county, with the county ecologist, um, and they've suggested a number of conditions regarding the retention of the mature oak tree, which we saw before, um, sensitive lighting pro to protect sensitive lighting scheme to protect bat foraging roots and uh, precautionary measures to prevent accidental harm to protected species during development and also biodiversity enhancements. So the, the, key, the key issue um, with this scheme, obviously the design and, and the other details are acceptable, um, but the, the key issue is in terms of policy. So the the proposal is on an allocated uh, allocated employment site EMP26 in the in the local plan and that's for employment use but policy EC6 advises that um, use classes B1 B and C B2 and B8 are all um, appropriate on this site but offices are actually within use class B1 and they're not considered to be an acceptable use on an employment site and therefore not policy compliant. Policy EC6 also states that the location of new office development which within class B1A will be in line with policy EC1 which is the hierarch hierarchy of centres for town centre uses. So. Um, where development involving a town centre use, such as this, offices are con considered to be town centre uses, where it's proposed outside of the town centre, um, this will require a se sequential test to demonstrate there is not any other suitable available location within the town centre. So that, that test has been carried out and it shows that there are no, op no opportunities within the town centre. The report did identify six sites within the town centre, and they were they're essentially were too small or or not a, not readily available, and also included two sites um, within the council's Gungate redevelopment area, but again they were not considered suitable for this particular development. Um, the developer is seeking to construct a Grade A office building similar in quality to the, to the other ones that that that, that we've previously looked at, um, and. The likely occupier will demand both adequate car parking and extensive high quality landscaping. So, tho so those sites were discounted. Um, in addition to that, further justification, justification is that the, this, this site is part of a larger existing office development granted in 2005 and there was a master plan that covered all of this area for, um, for offices and, and this site was included in that. But because it's pr because it was it was um, proposed or um, approved prior to the current local plan, um, it now falls foul of the the current policy. So it's it's a sort of slipped through the net in the policy as as it's gone through time. Um, the scheme follows the pattern established at the outline stage, but but it's not actually an, an outline application. Uh, a reserve matters application. It's now a full application because of the overall time frame. So it's a little bit complicated, but um, so overall, um, the sequential test has concluded there's no other sites available. There's clear benefits to the econ economy of providing offices in this location, and amongst other offices and within a commercial environment. But since, since it's concluded that it's not strictly policy compliant, it would not, not comply with the definition of employment uses in policy EC6. If we just uh, go through the next couple of slides, I think there were some photographs at the end. That's just the, yeah, that's the the entrance to the site and then there's a few more beyond that yes this sh this is showing the existing unit so it's just demonstrating the the quality the nature of the, the units that are there at the moment and then the next slide that shows some some further um units built by the the same developers on centurion court so that they are very committed in in providing high quality uh, designs here 
Um, so the, the recommendation, um, together with the conditions indicated in the report, a number of conditions as recommended by the, the various consultees, um, is, that the, is that the application can be approved subject to conditions and section 106 regarding the framework travel plan monitoring contribution. Um, I also need to point out that since it, it has been concluded that it's not strictly policy compliant, we've had to um, carry out further advertising through a site notice and a press notice uh, as a as a departure from the local plan, so it effectively it doesn't comply with the local plan, so that's been required. The, um, and those notices expire on the 21st of December, so if there are any further representations that raise material con considerations that have not been included in this report, um, that could be reported back to members in due course. But um, th as there were no objections to, to this scheme, it's, it's, it's unlikely that there will be further representations, but obviously we have to go through that process. Um, and as I say, in any case, it's subject to a, a 106 agreement, so, we, so the, um, the decision wouldn't be issued until the 106 has been signed as well. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sally. Uh, before we move to debate, does anybody have any questions, points of clarification? Councillor Pritchard. Thank you. Uh, if I can ask, the, the land that this building is going to be uh, pr proposed to be put on, it is designated currently either industrial or commercial land. It's not open space. No, Sally, no, the answer is no. But yeah. Chairman, yeah, it is allocated for employment use, yeah. One final question, Chair. Yeah. Offices employ people, would that be correct? Uh, they do generally, yeah. Any further questions? No, we'll move to debate. Does anybody, anybody wish to start the debate? Councillor Harper. Hiya. Uh, thanks, that was a lovely, well-presented report. And uh, the only um, query I have really, uh, this is a speculative application, I understand. Um, what's the current occupancy of office um, space or similar office space in the, in this area? Is is there a lot of um, of occupancy currently or not? Um, as, as I understand it, Chair, um, the the developers that, that have uh, already built these the, the two offices that are on this site they are they are completely um, occupied and there are other buildings that they've built more recently have been occupied so I don't think that because of the the high quality nature of it it's quite a sort of um, a niche niche market if you like so I think the the developers are, are quite uh, well uh, they they have already got people lined up to to occupy it so I think that there wouldn't be any problem with with occupying. Thank you. So it's not going to be sitting idle for a long time. It's going to be occupied pretty straight away. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Can I just remind members we've moved into debate now. We've passed questions, really. But I'll let that one go. Does anybody want to start a debate? Councillor Jay. Um, yes, yeah, similar to Councillor Harper's point, I was about to say it seems strange timing to build an office of that size but if it, their confidence can be occupied then um uh, you know it's a positive for time with high quality offices jobs in an area that's already got offices um it, it seems a no-brainer to me i don't see any reason to really really debate it or any, any reason to go against it thank you councillor jay does that mean you're moving it councillor jay <laughs> happy to move it thank you councillor pritchard thank you councillor pritchard uh, we'll move to a vote, please. All those in favour of uh, approving the application? That's a unanimous vote. Thank you, everyone. Councillor Jay, thank you. You're uh, relieved of your duties this evening. Thanks, thanks, sir, Tom. Right. Move on to the second application this evening. That is uh, numbered 0334 2021. It's Tamworth Daycare Centre, Hockley Road, Wilnicott. Sally, over to you again, please. Uh, 
Okay, Chair. Um, this is a scheme for the refurbishment and reuse of the former day, Tamworth Day Centre and its associated grounds for um, a 100% social, social housing scheme in association with, with the Council. It involves the conversion of the former school, school building to provide 16 new residential units, which will be eight one-beds and eight two-bed suites, and the erection of two three-storey modular units to provide six-bed sits and two detached three-storey four-bed houses on the open frontage off Hockley Road. Um, the applicant has entered into a legal agreement to secure the site from Staffs County Council to procure a development that will provide housing for Tamworth Borough Council's house, housing department's current needs. Um, it, it's known that the, the local authority can, currently has a shortfall of dwelling types within the borough and the applicant has been in close discussions with the housing department since uh, two th late 2019. Um, it's been identified that single parent families or single persons requiring support are predominant predominantly on the authority's current waiting list for accommodation, so, so that's what it's providing. Uh, both parties have been working closely in developing a brief that endeavours to bridge a shortfall of dwelling types that the authority seeks. Um, the application site is located in a, in a many residential area of Hockley Road and a secondary frontage onto New Road, so on the, the slide in front of you, Hockley Road is on the, the left of the site, it's not very really clear I'm afraid, but New Road is, is at the, the bottom of the, the picture. Um, the building is the subject, which is subject to the application, um, is a former day, Tamworth Day Centre and it's one of two former 19th century school buildings which are of some local historic interest. The building is currently vacant and although in good condition it's at some risk from van vandalism and general deterioration. And uh, this proposal is, is uh, providing a sustainable and, and beneficial new use. Uh, the site has a relatively open frontage and principal ve vehicle access to Hockley Road and this serves the areas of hard standing that which is the former schoolyard that surround the building which present is presently is, is used for car parking and there's also a secondary access to New Road. Um, it's also proposed to introduce a number of small landscaped areas within the site and uh, shared use which are which for shared use of the occupants and of the proposed flats. Um, and also the proposals include um, a total of 39 car parking spaces within the site and cycle and bin storages are all also included. If we just perhaps run through the slides, that might be the easiest way. So there's the, um, the aerial view and yeah, that's the more detailed picture so you can see the the h-shaped building is the existing school the the purple square at the top that's where the proposed um, flats are and then the the green area to the left of the picture shows two uh, residential four four bedroom residential houses with uh, with associated gardens you can't very easily see the parking space but there is parking sort of dotted all around the site um, mainly sort of echelon parking along the side of the building um, and there's some along the the site entrance off Hockley Road which is to the the left and the the access onto Hockley Road has been has been slightly widened to uh, to accommodate uh, two-way traffic um, and also to avoid a tree which again you can't see very well I don't think on the on the slide I'm afraid but um, there is a tree right at the the uh, point of access which is to be retained. Um, in t just running through the report, in terms of representations we did have five letters, um, some of them requesting, requesting further details and, and requesting details about parking um, and some concerns certainly made about car parking for residents and visitors in view of the existing parking problems on Hockley Road. Um, and other matters raised were um, retention of, of the heritage buildings uh, mm. and some comments about overlooking and design of the new buildings. Um, in addition, there were some comments from the Tamworth and District Civic Society, um, again requiring retention of the um, 
the adjacent school, which is the infant school to the uh, the right hand side of the picture, but that's that's is to remain and it's not part of, of this actual scheme. Um, so in terms of planning considerations, um, the site is in a is a in a sustainable location, so it's it meets with with policy requirements for for redevelopment. Um, it's within the the Wilnercote regeneration corridor, so again that's that's. Um, an area that, uh, that where sustainable development is encouraged, so that's uh, a plus point for it. Um, it makes use of a redundant brownfield site, and, uh, and therefore that's consistent with advice both in our policies or you know, within Tamworth local plan and also within the national planning policy framework. Um, the framework supports the development of underused buildings, especially if this would help meet identified housing needs. And obviously, this this scheme is for for housing for housing housing needs, so it would uh, comply with that policy. Um, in the council's housing policies, um, H policy HG one actually allocates the site for for housing, so it's uh, site reference four eight eight. So that's obviously supported by the plan. Um, policy HD, HG4 refers to affordable housing and, and the scheme proposes 100% affordable units. So, so that would obviously uh, meet with that policy. And then policy HG5 regards housing mix. Um, it does fall slightly short of the, the uh, requirements in, in the housing mix policy, but um, they, they will meet the identified need, as I, I mentioned earlier, uh, the identified local housing need, and then s therefore um, overall would satisfy, satisfy the objectives of, of that policy. Um, and in terms of density, it would achieve a density of 40 dwellings per hectare, which is in line with, with the policy. Um, in terms of the design and character, if we go on to the next slide, I think, yes, we've got some... That's shown the existing buildings, and you can just see um, that the shaded areas are where uh, window details will requ are required to, to be changed or um, or improved in order to, to make s suitable windows or windows or other openings for the uh, proposals. Um, th there are a few external changes. Um, so the conservation officer has been consulted. In respect of these, and, and he's uh, happy with with those proposals. Um, if we go to the next slide, that's the pro proposed um, two dwellings on the on the Hockley Road on the Hockley Road frontage. Um, the design of these has changed slightly in in conjunction with the uh, conservation officer so to achieve something a little bit more traditional than was previously suggested um, again he's happy with with those details um, and especially cons considering there's that there is variety of architectural styles um, along Hockley Hockley Road and the surrounding areas um, in terms of heritage matters then which um, there is a, a fairly large section in the report on on heritage um, we refer to policy EN6, protecting the historic environment. So the council will support pr proposals that promote the use of vacant and underused historic buildings, including necessary and minor changes. And um, in relation to that, the MPPF, the National Planning Policy Framework, says that in weighing applications that directly or indirectly affect non-designated heritage assets, a balanced judgment will be required having regard to the scale or any harm or loss and the significance of the heritage asset. So we'd be considering those, those two policies in, uh, in this section. The submitted heritage statement that came with the application refers to, to two... Um, further Grade 2 listed buildings nearby at uh, Man Manor Farmhouse and also at 139 Hockley Road, um, which is a 16th century timber framed house. 
but the proposed development, because of its its location, will not affect the setting of those two listed buildings. So, so that's uh, been accepted. Maybe best if we go back to the layout plan, Tracy. Uh, yeah, that that's probably the easiest one to look at. Um, so, as regard the, the the actual schools, they're not list Neither of the school buildings are, are listed, um, but they are recorded in the historic environment record. Um, the building now proposed for reuse, the sort of H H H design building, um, is the larger of the tools, larger of the two schools. It was built in 1877 as a public elementary school, and then the the adjacent building, the was the infant school, also built in 1877. Um, and there's some commentary in the the report about the the sort of design of the those buildings. Um, they were the both buildings were assessed by S Historic England a few years ago in 2016, yeah, June 2016, to see if, if they could be recommended for listing. But um, it was concluded that they would not be recommended for listing, despite um, some some of their qualities. Um, but it's it's considered that the signi significance of the of this building, which is a, a non-designated heritage asset, it, the significance lies in its arch archaeological, architectural, and historic interest. And in, in order to pr protect its heritage interest and overall significance, any proposal should seek to ensure that these elements are not harmed or lost. Obviously, the building is being retained, so so those um, important elements are retained. And then other issues were regarding drainage and a drainage, a drainage strategy was requested by the local lead flood authority. Um, in the report we hadn't received a final, um, we'd, we'd received some further details and we hadn't re received a final tick if you like from the, the local lead flood authority but I can report that we have, have now um, had that so the they accept the condition that's indicated in the report. So, so further details on, on drainage. Um, as regards highways, as I mentioned, there's 39 car parking spaces altogether. That complies with Appendix C of the local plan, which sets out the local parking standards. So there's, there's different standards for the four bed units and there's different standards for the flats. But overall, um, subject to, to some amendment because it was considerably less initially, um, Th this uh, scheme now meets with those parking standards, so it's in accordance with the standards. Um, and there were some some further amendments um, that highways had required in re in respect of location of the bin stores, um, uh, and in particular whether a refuse vehicle could turn within the site, which it was it was discovered that that really that wasn't. A, um, going to be likely at all so now the bin stores are on the the south of the of the picture there it's a little brown square um so the access to the bin stores will be from new road so only from new road and, and none from um hockley road other than the two dwellings that are right on the the corner there um, and then the, the only other thing to mention is, is trees and ecology. There, there was a bat survey was included as part of the, the scheme and some further recommendations are made that are, are within the report there. Um, yeah, so overall the, the heritage, heritage issues have been addressed and the scheme is considered to, to be acceptable and create no harm to the significance of the heritage ass assets. Um, the de design is considered acceptable, uh, subject to changes with the conservation officer's approval, and therefore we consider that this is is a high quality design scheme, um, as required by policy EN five of your local plan, and and all other matters have been addressed satisfactorily. So the recommendation is for approval, 
subject to delivery of affordable housing in perpetuity in accordance with policy HG4 and that, that needs to be via a section 106 obligation so that will be required for just securing the, the affordable housing and, and then there's a list of uh, seven conditions I think there's a, some of the numbers have gone a little bit awry in the condition numbers but uh, there are actually seven conditions listed within the report thank you chair Thanks, Sally. Um, <coughs> we have a speaker on this application, uh, Mr. Gavin Mullally, who is speaking on behalf of the agent. I'd like to come forward, take a seat. You'll need to turn your mic on, which is the big rectangular big button. button. When you're ready to start speaking, your time will start from when you start speaking. Great, thank you. So, hello everyone. I'm uh, Gavin Mullally, one of the directors of Cornerstone Partnership, and we are a social enterprise based in Tamworth, and um, providing homes for those in need. Um, we are the um, applicant for for this development, and um, like, as, as Sally mentioned, we've been working um, with the Borough Council since 2019 on this uh, on this concept. Um, the mix of the units on site have been developed um, in partnership with the housing need from the from the borough council and um, over the last few months since the application has been submitted we've been working we've engaged with the local residents uh, and the civic society in terms of the the heritage requirements and we've made amendments to the development on the basis of feedback from the local residents and neighbors and the civic society as well um, we will work with the, um, the planning authority to secure affordable housing through a section 106 through any means that uh, are deemed necessary but it's our only intention to sell this site to Tamworth Borough Council as previously mentioned so therefore all housing will be affordable housing. Um, and it probably it's not relevant to this plan application but um, we are retaining the site next door for community use. Um, so that's going to be shared offices for social enterprises and we are working with um, the Community, Gev Community Together um, kick and several other charities to bring the building back into community use. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's no other speakers, I believe. So we'll move to questions before moving to debate. Are there any questions, please? Councillor Maycock. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify on the drawings. Uh, it's got three bed houses. Back. Back. Let's get it down back. And again. Phase two, two number, three bed, semi detached. I'm struggling to see that. But yeah. Sally, have you got any comment on that? Yeah, yeah I, I understand, Chair. There are four, four bed houses, actually. Um. These are the two houses at the front, on the front onto Hockley Road. If you go back to the elevation on the next plan, the next one. No, that's the no, flat. No, the one before, the one before. Um. Yeah, I understood they're four bed, they're four bed houses. Yeah, I'm just going to ask for clarification from the back of the room, if I may. No, that's fine. They're originally four bed houses, but because of the, the garden size requirements um, and the amendments we went through, uh, yeah. they became yeah. a three bed house too, because the garden size was going to accommodate additional parking. Thank you. Okay, so there's three bed. Cheers, thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Pritchard. system, is it going to be uh, two-way? Uh, and then you've got parking facilities. Yes, Chair. Perhaps if we can go out, go back to the layout. Um, it, initially, it was going to be a two, uh, a one-way system. Sorry, um, but through negotiations with Staffordshire County Council, it is now um, 
it is now a two-way, so the access onto Hockley Road has been slightly slightly widened. Um, there are parking spaces either side of the access as you as you first go in, which is in the sort of grey area, um, and the rest of the rest of the car parking spaces all around and about the site there's a row at the at the top of the site and there's a row adjacent to the existing buildings it's it's difficult to see them there i'm afraid but um, but that has all been agreed with uh, staffs county council highways so um, in terms of the layout and, and the sort of widths of the spaces and the design of the spaces that's all all been agreed so that so that that, that number of spaces can be accommodated thanks sally is that okay councillor pritchard Councillor Mako. Uh, just a clarification. Um, so is it only the rubbish uh, trucks that are going to be going down New Road? That's not going to be a entrance or exit for residents? Yes, um, on New Road where the, the the brown shaded area is, that's that's a bin store. Sorry, no, down, down the bottom that's it yeah that's the bin store so that w and that will access onto onto new road but um there is there will be an act there will be an access point onto new road which is just um uh, yeah right about that yeah um but essentially the the traffic's going to be using the hockley road entrance and exit so we're saying the new road the new road entrance is a secondary entrance yeah yeah uh, are we saying it's pedestrian only Sally, I don't think that's what we're saying, is it? No, it, it is. It will be a vehicular access as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, Councillor Maycock. Sorry. Um, with the cars parking diagonally, is there enough space for two cars to pass each other in that gap? Uh, Yes, Chairman. As 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 I said previously, this has all been agreed with the with the Highways Authority. So, um, they we've actually there there is another plan that that shows sort of tracking of vehicles. So it shows how they can turn in and out. So we've we've gone through all that with a fairly fine tooth comb, to be honest, um, with the with the county. So they are satisfied that that you can get in and out. It's it's tight certainly, but in certain spaces, but uh, but. As long as it meets with the th with their standards, then they're happy with that. So it is a two-way access. Yes, chair. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I, I know. I know the entrance would be to, could be two-way, but actually, where the cars are going to pass each other in the property, because don't really want people driving up to each other, going, no, you reverse, you reverse, no, you reverse. Sally, got any observations? Um, yeah, I mean, th there will be an element of that, certainly. Um, you know, people will have to wait for somebody else to come out b before they can they can get past. But um, um, in terms of the width of the access, that is that is something that um, the, the county find acceptable. And, you know, that's, that's a, a normal relationship, really. OK, thank you. Anything further in questions? Blimey, I saw three hands at once then. I'll go Councillor Harper first. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm just wondering, you, um, you alluded to the objections, that you've had a number of objections. Are those mainly from local people? And could you give us some idea of how many? Go on, Sally. Yeah, yeah, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. Five letters were received. So um, one of them was was asking about uh, what provision has been made for car parking for residents and visitors in view of the existing parking problems on Hockley Road. And then there were four others um, that were raising also park general parking issues, um, retention of of, heri of the heritage, retention of the existing buildings. Um, one was about overlooking and another about the design of the new buildings. So five altogether. Thanks, Sally. Councillor Harper. Thank you for that. Um, the Civic uh, Society, I know, have been very involved and have launched quite a, 
a well uh, publicized campaign about these buildings are they satisfied that this uh, scheme covers all of their concerns sally as i understand it chair um they their concern was about the the um, adjacent infant school which is which as i've said is not included in, in part of this scheme but it's going to be retained any the building will be retained and it and uh, we've been told it's it's going to be retained for community use anyway so I, I assume that satisfies the uh, the Tamas Civic Society. Thanks, Sally. Thank you very much. The uh, one one last point, if I can make, this is building was um, designed by Basil Shapnis, who's a very well known architect of the late Victorian era and uh, and early twentieth century. He designed a lot of buildings in uh, Oxford. Uh, university in Cambridge and so forth um, and so it's it is a an important building in that respect um, and I'm hopeful that with the building work that's particularly with the insertion of the new windows and the new doorways and so forth that are going to be required the original bricks and the um, which would have been purposely chosen by Basil Shapnis uh, wherever possible will be reused and if none are available some very close copies will be will be used and every effort will be made to make these um, additions and alterations to the original design look as though they belong and not look as though they've just been punched through the walls or whatever Thank you. Sally, any observations on the building materials? Yeah, just just to point out, um, condition number three um, does require um, all materials to be agreed first, any new materials to be agreed first with the council, so it's something that, that we, we would have to look at before um, before they actually reuse any of the materials. Uh, the, the design is, is quite modern design, which is sort of in contrast with the existing building, but again, that's been agreed with the conservation officer, so, uh, and he will no doubt look at materials as and when we, we have those presented to us. Thanks, Sally. Okay, Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to make a, uh, an observation that... Um, okay, can I we just, can just keep it to questions? For now, please. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Um, in that case, I shall wait for your next Thanks. invitation to speak. Thank you. Councillor Wade, you put your hand up. Thanks, Chair. Has there been an impact report on uh, for the extra traffic going in and out of Hockley Road concerning the other tenants? I think highways have are satisfied, aren't they, Sally? Is there any other comments on highways? Yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly what, what report was presented, but um, but there have been a number of discussions with highways, so you know they they have obviously been aware of the of the issues regarding um, additional traffic. So they they are satisfied that that this scheme provides that now. Thank you. Is that okay, Councillor Wade? Covers it. Good, Councillor Pritchard. You put your hand up. You've forgotten, haven't you? <laughs> Sorry, Chair, yes. I'm back with you now. Um, it's noted that the adjacent buildings are going to be used for community support. Um, does that mean that there'll be council officers there supporting the residents uh, and issues that may occur within the, the community itself? Or is this a general community sort of centre uh, for everybody to use the facilities that are provided? Thanks, Councillor Bridget. I think it's probably difficult to answer that because it's not part of this application, so we can't really comment. But I don't think you can say any more, Sally, can you? With, with, with respect, Chair, it's uh, it's a selling point that's just been raised, so um, it's, it, it is part of an overall development. It's not part of this application, though, so we can't we can't really comment. But I don't think Sally can say any more anyway, can you? 
I can't. I'm afraid, Joe. No. <laughs> well, thanks, Councillor Pritchard. Any further questions? Councillor Harper. I hope this one will be acceptable. Uh, <laughs> if it's a you. question, it's acceptable. <laughs> it's a question, or what? A, or I shall make it a question anyway. Um, in the report, um, it is proposed to introduce a number of small landscape amenity areas within the site for the shared use of the occupants of the proposed flats. Who will look after these areas? Uh, will they be re the responsibility of the residents, or will there be someone there to look after them for them? Thank you. Um, I, I imagine, Chair, that they, they will not be the responsibility of the residents. There will be some sort of management company that will, uh, or management uh, proposals that will look over the, the whole of the buildings as well as the landscaped areas. Thanks, Sally. Uh, Chair, do we know that for a fact? Because the last thing in the world we want is for uh, ungainly um, areas. I think we perhaps ought to pin down that this is done or sorted by someone. Yes, Chair. Well, um, the, the, exter the exterior of the buildings will need to be maintained anyway, so this, this, can, make, this can include the, the external areas as well. It's, it's often the case when you, where you've got flats rather than individual properties. <coughs> Thank you, Sally. Thanks, Sally. Okay. Go on, Councillor Wade. Cheers, boss. Uh, are the dwellings just for social people of the time of residence, or are they going to be sold properties? I think the answer to that is they're all social housing, so not sold. I think I'm right, Sally. Yes, Chair, it is. It's, it's Thank all, you. They're all social housing. All I'm getting good at this. <laughs> Councillor Pritchard. Okay, then answer me this one. Um, we, we just talked about um, the grounds and the maintenance. If it's going to be a council-owned development, surely we as a council would be responsible for placing or putting in place the maintenance and services to the externals, and we have our own grounds contractor in-house called Street Scene. So surely would, we would be looking to use our own internal services to ensure that the site remains an attractive place to live. I don't know the answer, believe it or not, but I would agree with you. I would expect if it's council owned that the council would maintain it. So would, what's your thought on that, Sally? I would I would imagine so, Chair. Um, if Well, the council are... Uh, due to be taking it over ultimately so as and when that happens then then i'm sure it will be something that the council will will maintain themselves but i'm afraid i don't know no no definitely all right it depends on thank you any further questions right you can't resist councillor harper thank you chair so kind um just one um is it uh just if you could explain to me, if uh, if if at all, this paragraph here, um, seven twenty. Whilst the overall design and appearance of the proposed, this is the modular units, has had regard to the objectives of pol policy unit five. Um, did, um, oh, did, uh, given this lack of uniformity locally with the uh, surrounding properties. Um, the developers have adopted a contemporary approach to the design and appearance of the proposed residential units using a modular build system to be finished in a zinc-coated cladding, uh, the specific details of which can be agreed by a condition to provide a distinctive new development that will contribute positively to the local sense of place. Um, could you explain the zinc-coated cladding um, what is that? Thank you. Um, Over to you, Sally. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to show on the on the details. Um, if we go to the elevations, yeah, uh, next one, please. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't indicate it on there. There have been some changes to the design of, of these buildings anyway, the the modular style of them. But um, I, I believe actually we did change to 
I'll I, I jump in actually, Sally. I think the design has changed, you, yeah. and it's not zinc coated cladding. If I'm that's, right, that's that's brick and tile, which is which is what was it, it was amended to. So, yeah. So so that line in the report, I'm afraid, is is from the the previous um, the the initial um, proposals that came forward, and they have been they have been redesigned with the conservation officer to a more traditional design which is which is, has these thank you sally that did sort of scream out at me and i'm very relieved to hear that uh, that that is actually isn't part of the scheme because um whenever planners talk of a distinctive new development that will contribute positively i uh, <laughs> i get a bit worried but uh, thank you for reassuring me on that okay thanks Right, I'm going to move to debate. Who'd like to start? Councillor Harper. Thank you, Chair. Um, first and foremost, I'd, uh, I think, along with most people who care about Tamworth's um, historic um, fabric, um, it's relief to know that these buildings will be retained um, not necessarily in their original use, but um, they will be here for future generations to know of, and particularly with the architectural uh, provenance of this uh, of this site, um, it's good to know that um, the buildings are being put to a good and proper use that will be of great benefit to Tamworthians now and in the future. Um, a few years ago, they were buildings such as these would have just been bulldozed and a complete new build would have been um, suggested for the site. So I think it's to be applauded that this scheme has been um, put forward and um, I for one am, am very happy to um, to give it my blessing. Thank you. Thanks Councillor Harper. Does anybody else want to jump in? Councillor Maycock. Yeah, I'd just like to echo um Councillor Harper's views, uh, especially with it being in Mulnock and as a Mulnock councillor, I've found it hard not to speak on this matter. Now, I'm quite glad that I haven't because I've been able to ask the questions that needed to be asked in this forum. Um, and I'm really glad and happy to see the way that the council, the developer and the residents have got together, hashed it all out and come up with a really good plan and the need commending. Cheers. Thanks Councillor Maycock. Councillor Pritchard, you had your hand up. Thank you Chair. Um, for me, um, building on Greenfield isn't really the, the way to go. We haven't got enough Greenfield anyway. And the reutilisation of our buildings I think is a great idea. It's a great benefit to this particular building because it's going to give it a new life. It also brings great benefit to the people of Tamworth who find themselves struggling for accommodation uh, for many different reasons. So I, for one, would be very much supportive of this proposal. OK, thank you. Does anybody else want to chip in? I think it's, I'll, I'll say something, I think it's a great idea that this is being used. I remember the campaign to save the board school buildings when they they seem to be under threat at one point, so I think to save the buildings and have them used um, is uh, is a great benefit really to to the area, um, and I think uh, the best way to save an old building is to use it. So yeah, let's use it. Councillor Pritchard. Thanks, Mr. Chair. The the only other thing, the only other comment I would say is. I would love to see this being a quality development to ensure that we're providing quality of residence for our people and it's not something that we're, we're going to just put in and run away from. It's got to be the best we can do. I think uh, as the agents present, I think they've heard those comments and hope they'll, uh, they'll take note. Uh, does anybody else want to say anything on this? Okay, Councillor Maycock, go on. I'd just like to uh, move it for my chair, please. 
You may. You beat me to it. <laughs> Councillor Pritchard. I'll second. Seconded. Right, we move to a vote, please. All those in favour? Okay, that's unanimous again. That application is passed. And that brings to a conclusion this meeting. Uh, I'm sure we'll see each other at full council next week, but for those not at full council, have a good Christmas. <laughs>